The Femco started, I don't know if anyone knows the history or wants to know the history, but it started from a book group. I said before that students have capacity to um, learn what they want to learn, so they wanted to have a book club, which they had, and they were looking at, um, of Mice and Men, I think the book was, uh, one female character who gets murdered and she's nameless. And so they started talking about this, why, you know, what did that mean and all those sorts of things. And it was a lunchtime. They said, well, can we meet at lunchtime and just talk about this, which they did. And they said, well, basically that sucks. Um, what can we do about it? Can we have a class on this? So they came to me and they said, this is how it'll operate. We've got a teacher, la, la, la. And so we did. We put it in as a class and they wanted it called the Feminist Collective. And there are boys in this too, by the way. It's not just girls in it. And it's um, year eight to year 10. Our, um, you can think of them as electives, um, but they're vertical. So they met <coughs> and they said, well, <coughs> excuse me, it's okay you know, having a whinge about this stuff, but we really should do something. So then they started working with a graphic designer to make some posters. And they chose um, objectification of young women's bodies um, and the use of the word slut in social media to denigrate young women. And I don't know if people have seen the posters, but if you go on the website and Google FHS Femco, they made beautiful posters and one is an image of a young woman who was a student at the time with a hand slap to the side of her face and a bit of red slut. And so they developed that in the objectification posters and then they said, well, that's not enough. Now what are we going to do? We've got some posters, but that's not going to change the world. That's what we want to do. So they said, well, let's write curricular materials. So they had a Kickstarter campaign. We targeted $3,000 and got 12, <laughs> which actually allowed the teacher then to work. We went on a writing camp. I taught, co-taught this with the teacher at the time. Um, and so we took the students away on a writing camp with um, a writer. And we talked about what did they want in the curriculum, what sort of things did they think it was important. And then I did some work with them around, well, this is how teachers plan lessons. Well, that didn't go down very well. <laughs> <laughs> and they actually weren't interested in that part of the thing. Boring. No, that was the boring <laughs> bit. And I said, you know, you've got to have, like, what do you want to learn? You've got to have your objectives and you need to have your learning activities and you have some kind of... And they go, oh, no, no, we don't want to do that stuff. So... Part of what the Kickstarter money enabled us to do was to allow Bryony, the teacher, to work, um, she actually worked with the Victorian Women's Trust in a space to write the materials that the, the students had said they wanted. Then they test drove that. Then we had the opportunity, this is a very long story, should I stop? I think it's really <laughs> interesting right. and, you know, it's possible that there are some people from the community sector sitting there going, you know, there might be a school in my area that might want to do something like this and maybe I can help them. Um, so then at that stage, Deb Ollis from um, Deakin Uni was writing the Stepping Out materials, the kind of first edition, if you like, of Respectful Relationships. And we had a VCAL program, and I can't quite remember the connection, how do we connect with Deb, but we did. And she said, oh, look, we've got these materials, can we get a group of students to have a look at them? So our VCAL students looked at those materials and then they decided what they would do because they have to do a personal project as part of their outcomes. They would teach those materials to the FEMCO and then the FEMCO would feed back about what the materials were like. Does that all make sense? So it was all run by the kids. And so Deb and Leanne came and they did the evaluation of that and the, the older students taught the other, the FEMCO students the materials and that got some fabulous feedback. And what was really interesting was what were the things they wanted to learn about. And they wanted to learn about consent. And when I talked to them about that, because you think they know everything, well, they don't. They actually did not know the, what the legal elements of consent and all that was. So that was really interesting. But they also wanted to know about relationships. How do you, start, how do you end a relationship properly? Like, how do you actually do that? Now, that wasn't in the curriculum. But they, that's the, what they were interested in, around things like social media and so on. The FEMCO now... It's probably, this is probably its fifth year, I think. It's now up to, because it published those materials and so on and had that interest in the initial <laughs> stepping out materials, um, and now looking at holding conferences to bring in um, students from other schools who are interested. And we've already 
um, met with local schools around issues there. We also have a pride group um, who work with FEMCO on various issues and they hold you know, common celebrations and all of that sort of thing. Uh, and I've probably forgotten the question now. Um, no, I think what, what you've role did they it. have to play? Well, they were kind of instrumental in one way, setting the scene. But again, um, that the capacity to st for students to tell you about what they want to learn, how they want to learn it, what's important to them, is really, really important to create that environment that I referred to before. It's part of how do you have a humane learning environment? Well, you take you, you take them with you, and you listen to them. They're the experts, after all. Yeah. They are. Well, basically, adults are really boring when they stand <laughs> in front of kids. Like, seriously, you can be really boring. Not you. <laughs>